Okay, hey everybody, Nikki Burnett here with Taste Life Nutrition. I am with Gabrielle Grandel, the amazing functional medicine health coach who works with me, with my clients. Um, Hi, and guys. this is Functional Friday. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So, yeah. So, um, as we did last week, we are discussing some topics that are. Uh, you know, a little bit intense for some people, and that's okay because we like to have these discussions. And so what we want to talk about are masks and all all things masks. And we want to give you our thoughts on them, um, our research on them, and then just make sure that you understand that we're not doctors, this is not medical advice, but we're starting a conversation. And these are conversations that Gabrielle and I have on a regular basis, as well as with other people. Mm -hmm. Yep, just here to, yeah, thanks, Nikki. That's totally why we're here. And um, we welcome, you know, your, uh, your feedback. And um, we're here to talk about truth and medical freedom. And this is for education purposes and <laughs> <laughs> all those things. So, yeah, and jump in. Jump in. We want. We want. We're gonna. We we are gonna do our best to give you. It's our thoughts, but it's based in fact. And so we want you to jump in and join in on, on the conversation. I really wish that we could have the conversation while we, you know, while we're live having the conversation. Uh, unfortunately, Zoom doesn't allow that, or it not. They. It, I don't know. The technology is not there. I'm not sure what it is, but. Um, you know, but when we finish this, you know, we want to post the, the studies that we get our information from, and we want to give you the information that we have. And if there's other information that maybe we haven't seen, highly possible, um, then we want you to post that too. So we want facts, we want studies, and we want to just have the conversation and continue the conversation. Um, because, um, you know, unfor unfortunately, this could go on for a little bit of time. Um, but maybe it won't. So let's just jump in and start talking about it. And I think one of one of the the studies. So Gabrielle has a couple of studies that that she liked to share. And the first one is, um, sorry. Oh, so it's on the type of masks. I got my notes here, losing my train of thought. Um, but you know, there are the types of masks that are required. And I think what we want to understand is why certain types of masks are required, where the data comes from that shows that these masks do anything at all. And, you know, where, where is the logic in some of these mandates and requirements? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah, I wanted to share some, some evidence and just to, just to think critically about if there was something that worked and, and protected us and protected others, uh, it would probably be more specific. It would be, you know, something, a mask that was fitted to each individual and it would be made out of a particular type of material. It wouldn't be this, you know, um, haphazard, you can wear a scarf and you can wear, you know, an old t-shirt and you can wear a respirator and you can wear this or that. So um, a bandana, a bandana. One that gets made, right? The ones that are the the um, chiffon, where you see everything. So what is it actually doing? And again, we want to look at the science. Yeah. Where is the science that any of this has any effectiveness except for making other people feel better? Mm -hmm. Right. And making the people that are are wearing it feel poorly in a yeah. lot of cases in a lot of cases too so yeah, yeah. So let's jump in so i've got a couple of different studies and there's a lot more out there guys um that i'm happy to to reference and share with you uh as well but here's a couple that we can talk about today so this one is entitled a cluster randomized trial of cloth masks compared with medical masks in healthcare workers and this showed that the physical properties of a cloth mask the when reused show the frequency and effectiveness of cleaning and increased moisture retention may potentially increase the infection risk 
So the cloth masks that they're recommending that we wear actually have an, uh, you know, uh, they may potentially increase the infection risk. So that was interesting. This yeah. one, <laughs> this one was titled face masks for the public during the COVID-19 crisis. And the conclusion was the study found that the, so these were people that were in a operating room. Uh, the study found that the infection rate was 4.7% with masks and 3.5% without the masks. So it was higher with the masks. And there was no increase in surgical site infections when masks were not worn. So nothing got worse, even though they weren't wearing a mask. That's very interesting too. So interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. And, and what does that tell us? Again, we want to be logical about these things. We want, we want safety. We want to take care of each other. We want to take care of ourselves, but we need to have accountability yeah. um, and logic. And evidence. And that's, that's yes. and, uh, yeah, and evidence. And, pers um, and personal and responsibility. That's where a lot of this stuff is lacking. So right. going to... I'm sorry, go ahead. So I've got, I've got a few more. Um, oh, sorry. Go. That's okay. Go, yeah, girl. I, just, <laughs> I just got a few more just on the same, you know, kind of line of thinking of uh, people that are compromised, right? Where the, the last study we were talking about was the people in the OR, you know, we're saying that these people should be wearing masks potentially. If anybody is going to wear one, these would be the people that would wear one and it's not helping them. It's actually hurting. And so this, this is another, um, or, and to think about too, the healthcare providers, you know, that are, are wearing them to protect the individual that they're working with or on, it's not helping that situation. Um, this study mm -hmm. was entitled the uh, Physiological Impact of Wearing an N95 Mask During Hemodialysis as a Precaution Against SARS in Patients with End-Stage Renal Disease. So these were folks that were in dialysis, again, you know, compromised people. 70% of the patients showed a reduction in partial pressure of oxygen and developed various degrees of hypoxemia. Wearing an N95 mask significantly reduced the oxygen level, increased the respiratory rate, and increased the occurrence of chest discomfort and respiratory distress. So it actually made their oxygen levels and uh, worse and more uncomfortable. So. Yeah. And that's yeah, a really interesting study too, because yeah, it's really important. We, we, what we know is that there, there is a population that needs to be protected. What we also know is that this is real. We know that it's real. We know that all kinds of people are, are getting infected and having symptoms and, you know, young and old alike are going to the, to the, to the emergency department or they are spending their time. And, you know, we are, we, what we're not doing is discounting any of this, but right. we know for sure that the, the elderly and those who are, as you said, compromised, they have the, the, the multiple comorbidities. Those who are on dialysis are obviously very sick people who we need to keep safe. And so showing that putting them in a mask, so they're already having trouble, and then putting them in a mask for their safety is not keeping them safe. It's actually creating more stress on their body. It's yes. a problem. And right. again, we've got to go back to logic and data. Yeah, because I think everybody is interested in, in helping themselves and helping their fellow neighbor, you know, and, and <clears throat> I would wear a mask if, if someone could prove to me that, that it was, it was actually going to protect others and, and, or protect myself and that it wasn't causing me any harm. Right. But because mm -hmm. none of that has been proven and actually, you know, proven to the contrary, um, in a lot of cases, then, yeah, then it shouldn't be a requirement or, or a mandate. There should be a, a choice. Um, and right. there's also, you know, we're talking about these studies that have been performed and, and there's others. But what hasn't been looked at is long-term studies of effects on, on wearing masks in 100 degree heat and wearing masks in, for people that have you know, anemia and COPD and lower oxygen levels or elderly. 
or children and, and the psychological effects that this has from not being able to, to pick up on facial expressions and body language. You know, we are, our communication is, is more nonverbal than it is verbal. Um, and so we have some yeah. other more information to, to share on masks and what, what results when, when you wear masks and when you don't. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is I sort of a I love this video. So we we found um, a video. It was through an article with studies and, and that kind of thing. So again, and this is a physician who created this video. Many of you, of you may have seen it, and you may not have, but I I find it very compelling. Um, and so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead. We're we're, we're praying that this is gonna work. <laughs> so I'm gonna yeah. share my screen and share there we go and i'm going to play this video it's only about uh three minutes it's the same size as covid 19 or larger goes through and around a surgical Now a cloth mask I borrowed. So it's kind of hard to hear on my end, but is it? Every, but every, I think everybody can see and figure out what's going on. He's just using different types of masks and then using okay. this vape, right, to show how the aerosols and this the air gets in and around masks and viruses are yeah. are smaller than that. Well, yeah, and, and that's that's exactly the point. It's a, is the, what we breathe is smaller droplets and the virus smaller droplets than this, this vape is. Um, and it's not just going around, it's going directly through right. the mask. Um, and so he, he goes on, and if you want me to stop, that's fine, but he goes on um, and we'll post this link because I think it's a great link. You can find it on YouTube. This happens to be through video press. Um, but he goes through some of the more, even the, the, the really heavy duty masks, none of them work. Let's go ahead and show it. I wasn't, there, I wasn't trying to stop it. I just um, wanted to let you know okay. I couldn't hear it. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, I'm hoping though, because I can see that it's on the video. Thankfully, that's the beauty of Facebook Live. I can see it. <laughs> um, but I'll just continue. But know that we'll, if you can't hear it, then I'm going to, we'll post the link so you can watch it yourself. have an N95 mask. I have these shop respirators where they can put all kinds of things in them, but they're like an N95 because when you breathe out, look at that. Sure isn't going to protect you. Wow. Yeah. Any mask with a button on it has a valve that lets everything go from you. Now, there is absolutely nothing that any of these masks do to protect you from me. And the fact is... I don't know why he stopped. Oh. Okay, I'm going to stop it here. I, I like what he has to say, but I think that um, I don't want to waste time if it's if it's not working properly. We got the point. Again, I'll post it, um, and yeah. and I think that. Uh, 
that. So I'm going to stop my share real quick. Okay. Do you want? Um, I and I think that that's. Do you want to huh? share those uh, share those graphs? Are you ready to do that now? Sure. Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. Then I'll share again. <laughs> We've got more to share. So, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, the, we kind of wanted to move through this and again give you the data as as we see it um let's see so let me go up so um this is this these are graphs and what these graphs are showing us is that it, it's showing us when the mask mandate was plate was put in place either in um a, another country or here in the United States. And so these are the things that we wanna cover. Um, so we've got Austria. So you can see that they had a spike. They were going down and there's the mandate still went on and, and it went up. And this is in every country and every city. So we've got Germany, same thing. France, same thing. Spain, am I going too fast? Is this okay? Right. I think everybody can see you that can curve you know, pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Hey, uh, Belgium. Regardless. I mean, all oh, looks exactly going up. Yeah. Yeah. And this is interesting too. Look at Italy. They waited, 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 waited right here. It went up. At one of their <laughs> lowest points, you know? Yeah. 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 So then we've got, okay. So this is European cases. And remember, this is, these are all cases not deaths, it's not anything, it's strictly cases. Right. Um, and so here we've got masks required versus no masks required. And look at this, all the, where no masks are required, you have a little bit of a bump here. They just stay pretty level. Mm -hmm. Again, logic and reason and data. <laughs> logic and reason and data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we have, uh, this one is, let's see, behavior changes tracker, wearing a face mask when in public places. So the United States, you know, kind of just goes right along with everybody else. Um, and, you know, no matter what, wearing a mask, the cases went up. Yep. Okay, so now we're in the States, we've got um, California. So COVID cases, they required a mask, they used seriously peaked uh, but they want the look so masks are still required but they're going down so mask or no mask right Hawaii this isn't too we've got indoor masks then they started requiring outdoor masks again this goes back to where's the logic and reason when we know that sunlight it's Hawaii Hawaii is all sun it's beautiful all the time you go outside the virus dies but they're requiring they're requiring outdoor masks. Um, a lot so of reasons why it's, yeah, it doesn't make sense to wear a mask outside. <laughs> yeah. So then we have Texas versus Georgia. And so Texas masks were required, Georgia no masks re required. So you can see Texas jumped up, came down, jumped up, no masks required in Georgia. And it kind of was along the same lines, but still, lower with no masks mm -hmm. um why is that logic and reason yeah <laughs> logic and reason data okay so COVID 19 deaths so we have new york uh, who wore masks also put sick people in with elderly people um sweden just just a side note <laughs> sweden <laughs> no masks texas masks georgia no masks so obviously New York had a massive spike. And I think so much of it is due to the fact that we lost a lot of our el elderly in these, in these care facilities because mm -hmm. they are highly susceptible and they can't, shouldn't be around people <laughs> who have COVID. <laughs> you know, they already probably have co comorbidities because they're elderly. Um, and so we have a huge spike there. So then Sweden, of course, we have no masks, a little bit of spike, and look how low they are. Mm -hmm. um, Texas, masks required, jump up. 
and then down in Georgia, no mask ever required, and you know, fairly fairly flat lines. So, um, you know, those are the charts, the graphs that I I, I can't help it. I can't help to go back to, to logic, reason, and data. Logic, reason, and data. Um, and there's there's a lot of that that's missing yeah. in these mandates. A absolutely, yeah. And how come all this information isn't being shared widely? Right? Why is this not, you know, for the masses to disseminate and make their own choices? You know, this information is out there. You just have to, you just have to look for it. And, and that shouldn't be the case. It should be more widely available um, and not one, one narrative that promotes one thing, uh, you know, and the people that are sharing this information, you know, we think, I think we need to ask ourselves why they are being censored. You know why? Why is this information not able to um, to be readily available? Um, because yeah. we, we even know. I mean, those are great graphs, and I think they they show a lot. And and I also want to point out. I think we may have touched on this before that the death rates. You know, again, there's a lot of question about what is considered a COVID death and how they how they mark that. You know, and the mm -hmm. um, the loopholes there and the the vagueness of the of, of how to it, you know there's no laboratory proof or anything you know needed it can just be presumed and they can mark it as a covid death you know yeah is even it though dying? you just died with covid right not from and there's a difference that's exactly what i was going to say yeah there's a huge difference yep um you're not talking about that you know when you when you hear all these cases and so so many people are unnecessarily you know afraid um because they don't know this information uh yeah it's not not being given and provided to them um and it's fear it's all fear-based yeah or it's it's mostly fear-based again i go back to we know that it's a real problem a flu is a real problem heart mm -hmm. disease is a real problem <laughs> you know yeah we have a lot of real problems um but we need to have reason self-accountability, I take care of me, you take care of you, we do our part, we take care of our family, and this, and then we take care of our immune systems. We mm -hmm. eat well, we exercise, we get out in the sun, uh, we breathe fresh air. Um, all of these things are the things that we don't hear right. in media or even in medicine. Um, you know, and we're going to sit here and we're going to, you know, pound that in as far as long as we possibly can because it's our world it's what we do but if you know we have the potential of getting covid mm -hmm. um whether we're sick or not but so many people are asymptomatic we're testing we test more than any other country in the world why do our cases go up because we're testing right. are they symptomatic or are it. they asymptomatic huh I said, because we're looking for it. We're going to find it. Right, right, yeah. exactly. And so, of course, the cases are going to go up. But if they're asymptomatic, they are non-spreaders. I mean, that's just the way that it, that it is. Kids yeah. are non-spreaders. Asymptomatic you know, people, showing... yeah, mean they don't have symptoms. They're healthy individuals, <laughs> you know, for lack of a better yeah. word. Yeah, um, we all have viruses. We have viruses that live in us and they are mostly dormant. It's a part of life. Yeah. And most of us are asymptomatic with these viruses. Um, you know, some of them, some of them aren't. And some of them can pop their little head up every now and then. You know, we've got chicken pox and shingles, but we don't we don't, you know, stop the country for chicken pox and shingles. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a there's I a lot of that, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go, go. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of health catastrophes that we are not paying attention to um, that are happening all the time. So it doesn't make any sense to single out this virus uh, and act like, you know, we need to stay inside. And like you said, shut, shut everything down and wear a mask and all these things. Um, and you're right. I mean, I, I agree, you know, self-responsibility, personal responsibility, and we are we do want to look to healthcare providers and we do want to look to government and, and people to have our best interest in mind and, and set it, you know policies in place and put things in place that that help uh, that are in the best interest of our health. It's not just you know that we're 
we want to be just out for ourselves or something, you know, we, we want that. Um, and unfortunately that's just not happening on a lot of levels. Um, but I think the way the, one of the ways that we can change that, that we don't, that because we don't appreciate that is to get involved and stay engaged with one another and, um, learn about your body and learn about what you can do to help yourself because helping and protecting your immunity and your health and encouraging health, I think is one of the best ways that you can love on, on others. Um, one of the best ways that you can, can show up. Um, so yeah. And then we also just wanted to talk about, you know, again, on the topic of, in the idea of medical freedom and personal responsibility, I think also a lot of people are wearing these masks because they think they have to, because they think that it's a law. Um, you know, so governors have written uh, mandates or executive orders. And just so everybody knows, executive orders and mandates are not laws. They have not gone through the legislature. Governors do not have the ability to write law. Um, they are neither that nor are they legal or law enforcement. Um, and so, uh, so the, so no emergency, no disease, no health, um, you know, catastrophe supersedes the fact that this is not a law, you know, they could write a new law and at that point it would be something different, but, but currently no one is actually, um, ordered to wear a mask in a public place. Um, they can go in and, and, and have access to the service just equal to everybody else. And if they are not um, provided access, it is discrimination. It's not equal service to provide somebody groceries on the sidewalk as it is to let them come in and, and shop. Um, you know, it's like, it's like if you went to a gas station and the gas station, you wanted to use the bathroom and the gas station employee said, you know, the gas station bathroom is only for employees and no outside people can use the bathroom. Well, that would be fine. That would be legal. But if the gas station employee says you cannot use the restroom unless you wear a mask, that's discrimination. And that's against our civil rights. And um, so having no evidence that this is protecting and also having evidence that it could be harming and, and it not being a law or a requirement, um, but just a recommendation, you know, I, I, again, I don't, I don't think that I'm not personally going to move forward that way because of, because of those reasons. And I, I just wanted to, to share that because I think um, the more people that are aware of their rights, um, maybe they'd be more willing to step out. Yeah, and I totally, I totally agree. But there's something that we also need to be really aware of too, is in this place where we have these, these government officials who are overstepping their bounds, right? Um, overstepping their bounds is essentially tyranny, but it's happening. But so what we have to also consider um, and, and I said this to you earlier, this is not the devil's advocate kind of situation, but it's, it's just where we are living right now mm -hmm. is we have this small businesses who feel the need and I don't blame them at all. I I'm in contact with a couple of them, you know, on a regular basis who feel the need that they have to abide by these tyrannical mandates because they will overstep even more and come down and find them or shut their business down, legal or not, then they're gonna have to go into a lawsuit. These small businesses don't have lawsuits. So the fact is there, there's a situation where it's not, it's no longer about the overstepping. I mean, it's about the overstepping of the government, but it's, it's, it's about respecting the business too, because we don't want these businesses to go out of, out, out of business. Um, right. And so, you know, there's, I, I go to a business on a weekly basis and I respect that business and I'm going to, it's my choice to go or not. I don't have to go, but because I want to still provide business to small local businesses, I want to help them to continue to, to thrive in the environment that we're in. 
So it is my choice, although I don't believe it to be real. The, uh, not real is not the right word. I don't believe it to be healthy or that anything that I'm doing is actually benefiting anyone else. The only reason I do it is because I'm supporting the business and I want the business to do well. So it's a really sad, nasty, double-edged sword. Um, and this is, you know, one of the things we ended with on our last call was, or our last Functional Friday was, and I, it, it's kind of happening, but, you know, we have rights. The people rule the nation. Government doesn't rule the nation. You know, we are supposed to be the ones who rule the government and we need to stand up and say, this is what needs to happen. Have personal responsibilities, self-accountability. I take care of me. I take care of my family. You take care of you. You take care of your family. And, and then, you know, that in and of itself helps to then build community. Mm -hmm. um, but living in fear, um, uh, mandating out of fear, which, which perpetuates fear, um, is not the way that we're intended to live in the United States. But as far as I'm concerned, as a human. <laughs> yeah, um, so totally. It's, it's a tough place to be. It's a really tough place to be. Um, and it, it stinks. Oh, yes. And I agree. And I don't know if this is helpful, um, but my understanding is that as a small business owner, that once you, once you have that certificate of, of business, that you are then what's considered a public accommodation, meaning that you are open to the public and you cannot discriminate um, against anyone. You can't require them to do anything to get your services. Um, so that's the, that's, that's the legal, you know, that's the, the legality of it. Um, unfortunately they may do things that are illegal and shut your business down and then you'd have to take them to court and, you know, sue them. Um, and you would probably win. Uh, but you know, uh, to go yeah. through all that is, is a big nightmare. And, and I think that, you know, that's what you're talking about, but um, I do want to empower people just to know that that's the case. They don't really Absolutely. have to do yeah. that, um, you know, so, but yeah, yeah it's a yeah. big mess, but, but I think, yeah, to your point, the more that we can stick together, understand our rights, um, you know, and, and share with, with one another and come together, it's, it's our responsibility to, to protect our health and it's their responsibility to protect our rights to do that. Right. Absolutely. Perfect. <laughs> and on that note, so I think, how long yeah, are we going I to do this? <laughs> that's, I, I don't, I, that's another question. You know, how long can we have this emergency and what constitutes an emergency? Right. That's, mm -hmm. that's something yeah. that we all need to be asking. And if, you know, how can we mandate something to, to individuals that has a potential for harm, right? Until we can prove mm -hmm. that none of these things where they're showing harm. I mean, we've only touched on just a few. Uh, if they can't prove to the contrary, then what kind of, what kind of rule is that, you know, how does that protect us or help, help us? How does that help our health? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. Yeah. I hope somebody can answer it for you really soon. Exactly. <laughs> like you said, so we're just going to keep yeah. talking about things that you do promote health and, and do promote wellness and, um, you know, do encourage us and empower us and, and share the share the science and share what we what we find. Let's stand yeah. together. Let's yeah. let's so, come together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We we we're we're so separated and divided right now. I think it's important to 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 really make that point that we're still humans in an amazing country. Um, and yeah. and we we are more powerful together than we are divided. Um, and that's yeah. that's that's our goal. So and you can, you can do whatever yeah, you want to do. You know, everybody can do, we're not trying to tell anybody how to live their life or, or what to do. You do you and, or not to wear and, and I'll do me. Right. But I don't, I don't think anything should be, um, should be mandated, uh, on my body. Um, right. Absolutely. So if cool. you'd like to, to learn more, yeah. or work with us, um, when we'll just share real quick where you can find us. Um, so I'm at livingwelldallas.com or um, on social media, all of the, uh, a lot of the outlets, in, including YouTube under Gabrielle Grandel. 
And if you would like to um, give a call, I do free 20 minute phone consultations. If you wanna see if it's a good fit to work together and that phone number is 972-930-0260. And um, Mickey, where can they find you? So yeah, so tastelifenutrition.com is pretty much me on every everywhere. So the website, all the social media, except um, we do have Functional Friday, obviously. And then we've got, I do a real raw health for uh, feeding dogs, real raw food. Um, and so I do that weekly as well. So uh, beyond that, you know, reach out. We have, um, or you know, I do the same. I do free consultations. I have a free assessment on the website. And, um, you know, I, I, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, so fill out that, the, the free assessment on the website and I will reach out to you personally and we'll talk about what, you know, what your needs are and if, you know, if we're a good fit and if we want to move forward or just give some ideas on what, what things might be able to help. So, um, you know, we do invite you to join in on the discussion. You know, if you want to post comments below, send them some, send us some facts, send us some studies and data. Um, that's the stuff that we love. So uh, we just appreciate, you know, the conversation and we appreciate, you know, all of you who hang out with us when we do these. Yeah, totally. Thanks for listening. And um, we're going to do this again next first Friday of next month, which is Friday, December 4th. It's 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 Mountain Time. The plan is to talk about the V word. So be there. And I hope Perfect. you guys. All right. Thanks, everybody. Well. We'll see you later. Have a good weekend. Okay. Bye. Bye.